Hi guys and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Today we're doing a detailed tutorial for the module 3495 that's found in the latest generation of the Solar Atomic Squares. So if you have a GWM5610 or a GW5000 that has a U at the end, so GW5000U or GWM5610U, this is the tutorial for that module. It has been upgraded from the latest, from the last generation of the squares and the upgrades are very good. Now, just like in all my other tutorial videos, in the description you will find a table of content with time codes, so you can jump to specific parts of the video or functions of the watch. However, I, I would advise you to watch the whole video the first time, just so you get acquainted with all the functions that this watch offers. Now, first and foremost, this is a solar atomic G-Shock, meaning it's self-adjusting and self-charging. So this here is the indicator of the battery. If your battery is below M or H, so at low or charge, you should first place it on a windowsill facing outside, it doesn't have to be direct sunlight, to get the battery charged to at least the M level. Otherwise, you're gonna damage the battery or the watch is gonna stop functioning. So, once you've charged the battery to at least M or H, you can proceed with the setup of the watch. Like I said, this is a self-adjusting watch, but you have to do the initial setup yourself. To do so, you have to be in the home screen, where you're gonna have the day of the week, the date, the time, and that's it. So, if you're in any other mode, simply press and hold this lower left button, which is the, uh, the mode button, to jump back to the home screen, like so. Once in the home screen, you press and hold the adjust button to enter the adjusting screen. So press and hold. The watch is gonna beep and now it's asking you for your home time. This is your home time or your time zone. This is very important to set up correctly because, because all the times in the world time function are determined on your home time. So I'm currently at Paris, which is my time zone. You can go due east or you can go due west with the upper button, the upper right and the lower right. So let's put Berlin, which is pretty much the same. Now you don't have to find your exact city. It's just important that a city is in the same time zone as yours where you live. So once you've selected the home time or the home city, press the mode button to go to the next setting. The next setting is the DST or daylight savings time. This is the switch between winter time and summer time. You can do it manually by pressing the lower button to off on or you can just place it to auto which means that the watch will automatically receive from the atomic towers whether it's currently observing the summer time or the winter time. Pressing the mode button again takes us to the seconds. Now if we reset the seconds and you reset them by pressing this lower button, if you reset them after 30 seconds they're gonna jump to zero but the minutes are gonna move by one up. If you reset them before 30 seconds, so between zero and 29, they're gonna jump to zero but the minutes are gonna stay unchanged. So resetting it now, the minutes jumped to 21. If we reset them now, before they reach 30 seconds, they're gonna jump to zero, but the minutes are gonna stay unchanged, like so. Pressing the mode button again, the watch asks us about the hours. Here you can go up, you can go down, and you can also speed scroll by pressing and holding a button, like so. And you can go also backwards. Once you've selected the correct time, the hours, you press the mode button, the watch is gonna ask you about the minutes. Again, the same, you can go up, you can go down, and you can also speed scroll. Once you've set up the minutes, press the mode button again, the watch is gonna ask you for the year, again up and down with these two buttons, like so. Pressing the mode button again, the watch is gonna ask you about the month, so you can go again up and down, and pressing it again asks you about the date, so you can go up and you can go down. Now remember, this is something you will just set up initially, and once you set it up, if the watch catches the signal every night, it's always going to be correct. The calendar, the seconds, the minutes, everything. If you have trouble reaching or getting the signal, I did a video on how to do an amplifier, and I'll put a link right here so you can check that video out. Okay, let's move on. Pressing the mode button again, the watch asks you whether you want a 24 or 12 hour display. 24 hour is what it's called also military time, so now it's 19. If you select with the lower button, toggle it to 12, it's gonna be 7 p.m. or 7 a.m. So 7 p.m. 
or 1900. I like 19, so we're going to leave it like this. Pressing the mode button again, and this is one of the huge upgrades with this new module, because you can select whether you want the dates to be displayed as month and date, or <coughs> date and month, which is what we use in Europe. You toggle it again with the lower button to the desired format. Once you've done that, you press the mode button again. The watch is going to ask you about the language of the day. So day of the week can be displayed in English, Spanish, French, German, Italian, and Russian. We'll go back to English. Pressing the mode button again, the watch asks you about the key tone. So if we leave it like this, pressing the buttons is going to make the watch beep. If you toggle it with the lower right button to mute, you're going to have this little mute indicator here, and the watch is not going to make any sound when you operate the buttons. Let's put it back to key tone. Pressing the mode button again, another upgrade compared to the previous generation of solar atomic squares, is the light duration. This is one of the things that bugged me on the, late, on the last generation, because when you select it at one, it's going to be on for one and a half seconds, which is pretty short. On that generation, you couldn't select the duration. It was always one and a half. But here, pressing this to three, it's going to be lit up for three seconds after you press the light button, which is pretty cool. Pressing the mode button again, now the watch is going to ask you whether you want it to receive the signal from the atomic towers or not. This watch is going to try up to six times in the night to receive the signal. So if you live somewhere where you know the watch has no chance of receiving the signal because you're way off, like on the southern hemisphere, you can toggle it to off because it's not going to strain the battery and drain the power trying to get the signal that it cannot uh, get in any way. So you can toggle it on or off. Pressing the mode button again asks us about power save. So if you put the power save on, you're going to have this PS symbol here. You can toggle it off by pressing this lower button at off and then the symbol has disappeared. This means that the watch is going to turn off the screen if it's left in the dark for a long time. Let's leave it at on. Pressing the mode button again jumps back to the home screen. So if you missed any of the settings or you want to change anything, you simply press the mode button until you reach what you want to change. And you it keeps cycling until you're ready to exit the adjusting screen, which means that you just press the adjust button and there, you just set up the watch. Now the watch is going to try every night to receive the signal. If it was successful, in the morning you're going to have this RCVD symbol right here above the PS. So to check, in, in the home screen, to check when the last uh, successful uh, uh, reception was, you simply press the lower button, lower right button, while in the home screen it's going to get you to the get screen. So in the get screen, it's going to tell you at what hours and at what date it managed to do the last successful sync. Also, to exit the get screen, you simply press this button again. You, you can also initiate a manual reception by pressing and holding this button, whether being in the home screen or in the get screen. So press and hold. And there. And now the watch is going to try to receive. Once it, re once it catches the signal, you're going to have little L1, L2 or L3 displayed in this box. If it manages to catch it, it should take about 5 to 10 minutes to get all the data. Now, I doubt it's going to do it here, so we're going to stop it and you stop it by pressing this right here. If it's successful, there you, ha you have it, L1. So now it just caught the L1. It, it needs at least L2 to be successful. So, like I said, in my video, you can uh, I I'll sh I showed you how how to improve the the chance of getting a good signal. We'll just stop it because it's not gonna work. Although now it jumped to L3. Let's stop it. That's it. While in the home screen, pressing this button doesn't do anything. Pressing and holding gets into the adjusting screen like I showed you. The mode button will cycle you through the modes like I showed you. This is the get screen and this is the light button. So if we press the light button, it's going to activate the light like so. And it's going to stay on for three seconds because we set it up like that. You can also activate the auto light by pressing and holding the light button until you have the little LT displayed like so. Now, when you put the watch level and tilt it to your, uh, to your head, I mean to your face, it's going to light up, but only in the dark. Because this is a solar watch, it knows when it's in the light and when it's in the dark. 
This also makes it possible for the automatic light to stay on indefinitely. On regular battery powered G-Shocks that don't have a solar cell, it's going to turn itself off after 6 hours. On this one, it's going to stay on indefinitely until you turn it off by pressing and holding the light button again for about 3 seconds until the LT disappears. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the home screen. Let's move on. The next function is the world time function and this has also been improved. Why? Because you have five pre-selected time zones and you cycle them with the lower right button. So the first one is UTC, the second one here selected is London, the third one is Honolulu and the fourth one is Tokyo, fifth one is New York. Now, you can change any one of these by selecting, let's say, number one. So we don't want one to be a UTC, we want some other time zone, and this watch has all the time zones in the world. So while you selected number one, and here you can also see another improvement where you have the current time visible in all modes. So in the world time, this is the world time that we selected, and this is our home time. So we selected number one, you press and hold the adjust button, it's going to enter the setting of the world time number one. And now you can toggle with these lower right and uh, upper right button. You can go due east and due west and select whichever time zone you want to be a pre-selected time zone. So let's say Moscow. Pressing the adjust, pressing the mode button again is going to ask you if you want the DST or the summer tide turned on or off for that individual time zone. And you can do it for each time zone individually. So pressing the lower button, you can turn it to on and as you can see the time has moved by one up. If you turn it off, it's going to move by one down for winter time. Once you've selected the pre-selected time zone for number one, you press the adjust button and now in the world time as one, it's going to be Moscow, not UTC. You can do this for each one of these. So number four, we don't want it to be Tokyo, we want it to be something else. You press and hold the adjust button and again, move east or move west. So let's say we select Sydney. And again, if you want to turn on the summertime for Sydney while the world time is flashing, press the mode button and with the lower button you can do on or off. And that's pretty much it. Pressing the adjust button exits the pre-selected time zone. Another huge improvement that this watch has is not only does it display your home time here and your world time here, but it also has a time swap option, meaning that if you're traveling to Sydney from where I am, so let's say it's 426 where I am, I mean it's 1926 where I am, and in Sydney currently it's 426 a.m. Once I land there, I don't want uh all the alarms to be set up on my home time. I want them to be set up on Sydney time. So if I have an alarm set to wake me up at 6 a.m., it's gonna be based on my home time. So instead of going back to the settings screen of the home screen and selecting Sydney, you can do a time swap by pressing this and this button at the same time, like so. And now, Sydney has become our home time and Paris time has become our world time. So if I go back to the home screen, as you can see it's 426 because now we're currently observing Sydney time. Go back to the world time and we travel back. Now we want our home time to be our home time which is a Berlin one. Again you press these two buttons at the same time and again now the world time has become Sydney and our home time has returned to Paris. A very useful complication for people that travel a lot. And I love that they included like these five pre-selected time zones because it's, it's much simpler than on previous generation where you, where you just had one and then you had to change every, every time when you travel to another time zone you had to change it. Over here you can not only pre-select but you can do also the time swap function. Moving on, the next function is the alarm. This watch comes with four regular alarms and one snooze alarm. To cycle through the alarms, just like on the pre-selected world times, you press the lower button. So alarm one, alarm two, alarm three, alarm four, the snooze alarm, and the hourly chime. Each one of these can be turned on or off by pressing the adjust button. So if you want the watch to beep every full hour, you simply select the SIG, you press the adjust button and now it's on and you have this little SIG symbol right here. 
If you want to turn on the alarm 1, which is currently set to midnight, you simply press this button, you're going to have it as on, and you're going to have ALM here whenever you have at least one of the alarms turned on. If you want the snooze alarm turned on, you go to the snooze alarm, and you press this, and now the snooze alarm is also set for midnight, it's going to keep ringing, once it stops, it's going to repeat itself a couple of times until you go in here and turn it off by again pressing this uh, adjust button. Naturally, any alarm of these five can be uh, can be adjusted to any time you want. And even if the alarm is turned off, which you see with this on or off, so alarm one is on, alarm two is off, alarm three is off, even if the alarm three or any of them is off, once you start adjusting them and you do so by pressing and holding the adjust button, it's going to automatically turn on. So press and hold, once it beeps, now the alarm is turned on and now you select the time of when you want the alarm to go off. So let's do 6.50 or 6.05, so 6 hours, pressing the mode button, it's gonna switch to minutes. Now you can go to let's say 5 and once you've set the time to the desired time, you press the adjust button to end exit and now this watch is gonna ring at 6.05 every morning. If you want to turn it off, again, simply press the adjust button and now it's turned off. And that's pretty much it. To turn off the, the hourly chime, again, you go to the SIG and press this and now it, it's not going to beep every full hour. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the alarm. The next function is the stopwatch. Again, you, as you can see, you have the current time visible in this function as well, which is pretty cool, something that classic regular battery operated squares always had, but the solar atomic ones didn't. So a huge improvement. This is a regular stopwatch, a 24 hour stopwatch with one one hundredth of a second precision, and it can do first and second place and also split time. So to start it, you press the lower right button. To stop it, you press it again. To reset it, you press the adjust button. To do the split times, you start it, and press the adjust button while the stopwatch is running. It's gonna freeze the screen, but the stopwatch keeps running in the background. To unfreeze the screen, you simply press the adjust button and the stopwatch resumes. If you wanna measure first and second place, so let's say you have two runners, once the first one goes through the finish line, you press the adjust button. Once the second one goes through the finish line, you press the lower right button. And now you write down the time of the first runner, press the adjust button, it will show you the time of the second runner, and pressing it again is gonna reset the stopwatch. And that's pretty much it, pretty much it, so pretty simple. Moving on, the next one is a countdown timer. Again, another improvement. This comes with a 24 hour countdown timer settable down to the second. So if you start it when it, everything is at zero, it's gonna start from 24 hours and count down. Once it reaches zero, it's gonna beep. To stop it, you again press the lower button. To reset it to the selected time, you press the adjust. As I, can, as I said, you can uh, adjust it to any time between 1 second and 24 hours. To do so, while the countdown timer is not running, you press and hold the adjust button. The watch enters the adjusting screen and now again, going up, going down, and you can also speed scroll by pressing and holding. So, 7 hours, press the mode button, the watch is going to ask you about the minutes. Again, you can speed scroll, so let's say 10 minutes, and pressing the mode button again, the watch is going to ask you for the seconds as well. So let's put 5 seconds. Once you've selected the time you want the countdown timer to count from, you press the adjust button, and now the countdown timer is set for 7 hours, 10 minutes, and 5 seconds. To start it, again, you can press this lower button. Once it reaches 0, it's going to beep. You can also stop it, and once you reset it, it goes back to the time that you set in the memory. And that's pretty much it with the countdown timer. The only thing missing, which I wish it included, was an auto-repeat. If it had an auto-repeat, it would be pretty much perfect. And pressing the mode button again takes us back to the home screen. And this pretty much completes the review, I mean not the review, but the detailed tutorial of this module 3495. I'm glad Casio introduced this because it solves so many issues I had with the regular, uh, the previous generation solar atomic squares. This is definitely an improvement and like I said, the only way they can make it more 
perfect would just be to add the auto repeat timer. But even like this, it's a huge improvement and I believe I will be adding one to my collection. Anyways, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.